Greetings and welcome to the first ever Afterbird Plus modding tutorial and in this one we'll take a look at how we can actually make a very simple mod, edit and incorporate it into our game and then how we can gain access to the developer console or the debug console to maybe make some changes or maybe just play around with it a bit. So the first line here is us creating a new variable called test mod and we're saying to the game okay register our mod under the name test mod so the first parameter is the name is obviously a string and then the second parameter is the version number and basically every time that the game updates this number also changes because now we only had one update this version number is one and maybe if you had a ne next update then, then maybe that version number will be two or maybe there are some other convention that they'll go by and we'll basically have to adjust by that but that is obviously done for the fact that you might have some outdated mods and if the game actually receives an update then that number also has to be changed so if the developer of the mod has to go back see if there are any differences made and then change that number accordingly if to the version that is applicable. So if the game updated right now, we could go into the game and we would see that this mod is marked as old and we can't really use it until the mod maker updates it. So the function or the main thing here is that we create a new function. So to the test mod variable that we just got from the register mod, we had a new function called render. And in this function, we basically say to the game, okay, render the text on the screen. And in this case, we just render, this is a test, the first value is the x position of this text and the second value is the y position of this text. Then are the RGB and alpha values. And if you're not really sure what that is for the time being, 255 is the max value, zero is the minimum value. And in this case, this means that we are adding 255 red, zero blue and zero green, which means that it's just red. Um, and the last value is an alpha value, which means how opaque it is. And if it's 255, this means that this is fully opaque and not transparent at all. And if this was zero, the text would basically be invisible. So the last thing that we add is the callback function. And the callback function is basically us saying at a certain time in the game or when something happens, call this function and do something with it. In this case, basically every time that the game draws a render on the screen. If you're not really sure what it is, basically the game renders at 60 frames per second, which means that every second there are 60 frames inside. So every 60th of second we are calling this particular event. So this render, MC post render event happens 1 60th of a second and we're saying, okay, on top of actually rendering the game, uh, you, you should call this function as well. And in this case, what this does is basically just renders the text on the screen. So we are basically telling to the game, okay, just, you know, put this screen on the, uh, put this text on the screen and just keep it there as long as you're actually rendering. Uh, if you just call this function once, it won't actually stay on the screen because while it would render for that one particular frame, the next frame it would get overridden by the actual game render, by the actual game frame, and then that would disappear. And obviously you have to, Keep in mind that as the game, even if the game isn't moving, it's still rendering, which means that unless we call it with this particular callback, basically every single frame, put this text on the screen, the text is not going to stay there. We basically have to say it, that it should keep rendering or keep putting the text on the screen after the game has rendered. And that way we'll actually see the difference in game. So now that we had this mod, let's go into the game and see how we can enable it and then access the developer console. Before we actually go in the game, I have to tell you where to save this mod. So if you go under this folder, so C, Users, your username, Documents, My Games, Binding of Ads, Afterbirth Plus mods, you'll, you'll see a bunch of folders in my case, or in your case, it might be just empty. If you download any mods from the Steam Workshop, a new folder will appear here under that name, and then you can actually add mods here. Uh, if you're just doing it manually like I did, basically what you do is you write your mod or just copy paste it from the description, save it as main.lua, add a new folder, call it whatever you want, I just called it test mod, and then in that folder add the main.lua script. And the metadata.xml is going to be automatically generated, so you don't really have to worry about it. The only thing that is important is that you add this main.lua file inside, uh, and, and then when you run the game, basically it will take care of everything for you. But basically this is where you install your mods. Now that we're in the game, the first thing we have to do is actually enable our mod. So if you go under mods here, you can see that I have three mods installed, I guess. And this basically means that there are three folders inside of my mod folder. And the one we have to want or want to have enabled is, is the test mod. So if everything is disabled, just press tab and then ju just make sure that the one you want enabled in our case, the test mod is actually blacked out. If now we enter the game, uh, let's just start as Isaac on hard mode, doesn't really matter. 
we should see the screen or the text on the screen. And that is exactly what happens. So that, that, that means that our mod works. And because we are rendering every frame, so the first thing that, that happens is the game renders its frame. So it renders what's going on in, in the actual game. And then we render our text, which means that this text is basically over overlaid on everything that we already have in the game. So that means that it's over HUD, over Isaac, over the floor, over the enemies, etc. Uh, but that's also really important. The, the important thing is that we gained an ability to, to get to the developer console. And the developer console inside of this game is basically enabled whenever you have a mod in your mod folder. So like I said before, you can either install it from the Steam Workshop, you can do it manually or just copy my code from the description and then just add the new folder, call it whatever you want, and then just aim, add the main.lua file inside of it. And this debug console has a bunch of, bunch of goodies and there's actually a bunch of documentation as well for it. But for now, I'm just going to give you a few examples. What you can do is spawn certain enemies or items or even particular effects in the game. So let's just spawn Brother Bobby. Why not? We all love Brother Bobby. And you can see now that we spawn him, he actually follows us around. And that's great. Let's say that we want to spawn a bunch of Brother Bobbies. So first of all, we say spawn 3.1 or spawn, spawn Brother Bobby. Then we would say repeat. 20 times. And now we have 20 or 21 brother bobbies that just follow us around. And that's great. Obviously, they all work when you shoot. So that's great. Okay, so what else can we do with this mod? Besides just having a little bit of fun, it's actually very useful for debugging purposes as well. If you add any new items to the game, uh, there's this fancy debug option or debug command, which has also a bunch of sub commands, I guess, which help you to determine what your item is actually doing. So you can see here that we can set high luck, we can set quick kill, which means that we just kill every enemy in the room. We have something called grid info, which basically tells us how many grids are in the game or in, in the room and their relative positions as well. So of course, you might not really know what it is if you're not that familiar with it. But what's important is that you have certain things like infinite item charges here, uh, textual map, you can show the damage value as you shoot the enemies, uh, you can have infinite HP if you want that to test it out of course, or just like I said to play around with it. It's there for you to explore and just enjoy and have fun with it. Uh, you can also set achievements, uh, the time, you can restart the game, you can set up a bunch of challenges and basically whenever you want to, to do something, like let's say you give item, then you press the space bar, it's gonna give you all the options that exist in the game. So let's just give ourselves a, a magic mushroom, obviously. We're, we're much bigger now, our damage is increased, etc. Uh, so at this point, that's great. But there's one thing I want to mention is that every item or ev any entity you want to spawn, you have that starts with a P, okay? That starts with a P. So uh, what's something that starts with a P? A PhD, for example. You have to spell it with a capital P. You can't spell it with a lowercase P because there's a bug in the console, which means that if anything is spelled with a lowercase P, it takes it for a pill. So if there are any items or anything that you want to spawn that starts with a P, it has to be a capital P, not a small P like basically every other item. So let's say that we want to spawn the said item, we could write it in lowercase letters and it would work. But if it was PhD, it wouldn't, it wouldn't work because it thinks it gives us gives us a pill and that's exactly what happens. We get a bad gas pill instead of uh, instead of the the PhD item, which is what we intended. So you have to spell it with a capital case later, later, later. Um, I'm going to come back to this debug as I actually make more videos in the tutorial series. I'm going to go back to this debug screen. I'm going to show you all the applicable commands that you can use in a particular situation. If you have active item, for example, how we can use it, how we can actually edit the mods from inside here, or maybe update them dynamically and things like that. And ju just just be on the lookout. But for, for now, just acknowledge that it's there, maybe go in the game and play around with, with it a bit, and maybe read the documentation that was provided to us uh, by the developers. Or maybe if you can't find it, I'm gonna leave you a link in the description as well, which is gonna take you to the site to someone who actually uploaded the documentation online. You, you can read everything there. At this point, it's actually pretty barren and there's not a lot of description, which means that it's a lot of guesswork. Uh, but obviously, as, as the time progresses, we're gonna figure out things more and then I'm actually gonna make some more complicated mods. But for now, just be aware of the things that exist.
This is the end of our first modding tutorial and obviously there's a lot more things that I could cover, but for now I just want to stick to the basics, obviously there are a lot of functions and things we don't really know about modding yet, just because the documentation isn't very expensive, which means that first of all they have to update it a bit I think, and the second of all we still have to figure things out, and as soon as we do, basically expect me to make more videos. Uh, don't really expect this to be an episodic series like the previous or the first part was, uh, j just because there isn't really much of an episodic to go to, basically there's a bunch of functions inside which relate to a lot of different things, which means that I can actually structure it in a way that it would make sense, but what you can expect is that I would make a video called how to add an active item, or maybe how to add a passive item, how to set enemies ablaze or whatever. Uh, in those situations, uh, you can expect those kinds of video from me, and obviously I'm gonna make them as I see fit whenever I feel like I have enough grasp on the subject, or maybe that I feel that I'm actually teaching someone something, and obviously that's gonna be when I also get my hands down and dirty and maybe make a model to myself, and then I'm gonna present it to you and hopefully explain to you the process of how to make it, which debug options to use, and how we can actually figure out if things go wrong and whatnot. Either way, I hope you enjoyed this one, guys, and I hope to see you next time.